over and to the other side of the sea and to the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, that's the Lord Jesus Christ, immediately there met him out of the tombs, tombs a man with an unclean spirit who had this dwelling among the tombs and no man could bind him, no, not with chains. Because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broke in pieces, neither could any man tame him. Wow. Any man cannot tame this man. It's amazing. No man can tame him. They, they bind him with chains. I don't know how big the chains is, but just break it. The feathers break in pieces. How strong. I mean, if this demoniac of Gadara is strong, the demon that the demons, the devils that is in him, oh, he's so strong. Hallelujah. So, I'm talking to you this morning about Taming the untamable. Hallelujah. Is it possible to tame the untamable? Hmm. Oh, well, we know the story. He was tamed. Hallelujah. So let's bow our heads and pray. Thank you, Jesus, for your words this morning. Thank you, Lord God, for giving us. Jesus, even your presence, Lord, and your words. Lord, we are able, Lord God, to give our hearts to you because that's what you desire of us, Lord God. Lord, we sing a song sometimes, Lord God, that it's all about you, Lord Jesus. It's not the things that we made, things that we put in between us, Lord Jesus. It's not that you desire those things. You desire our hearts to worship you. You desire the things, Lord God, that we dear in our hearts to offer it to you as a living sacrifice. Even our lives. So we thank you, Lord God, for the people, Lord Jesus, that are here this morning. Lord, you are looking into their hearts. And we have seen it all. And Lord, we wish and we, Lord God, desire to please you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. So Mark chapter 5. Now he went from Capernaum, he crossed the Sea of Galilee and went to the country of the Gadarenes. And you will notice the whole story if you read some commentaries. And um, you will notice that he went just to save this man. Only one man. And then the people after that, no, they kicked Jesus out of the country. Hey, shoo, shoo, go Leave us. You're trying to destroy our livelihood. Because 2,000 pigs <laughs> went with the man, with the, the de with devils, and they were drowned into the sea. So they lost their livelihood. No pigs. <laughs> so they, they were so angry. But I want to bring to you today a story recorded in the Bible that I feel is a very needful. Even in our group and in our surroundings, in our society today. It's a great need of the things that the church can do. Especially what dwelleth in you and me. The power of the Holy Spirit. Even the Lord Jesus Christ can do in our homes, in our church and in society as a whole. Christ and his disciples came to the country of the Gadarenes. And if you look at the meaning of the Gadarenes, Gadara, it means surrounded. It's a walled place full of walls. I mean, you know, they were, they were across the um, Sea of Galilee and the name depicts that they want to be left alone. We put walls. You know, sometimes in our lives because we want to be left alone. You know, I want to be isolated. I don't want to mingle, you know, 
I want to have my own private life. Of course, that's, uh, that's nothing wrong with your private life. But if you put walls, surround yourself with who you are, what the things you love, then it's not really good. Because Jesus even wants us to expose ourselves to let the river flow and let the other people see who you are. You have to mingle. So this story will give us the meaning and the right direction that we are going to impact our society, impact our house, our homes. So, no sooner had Jesus and his disciples landed on the shore of the gatherings, there came a wild man possessed with demons to meet Jesus, to meet his disciples. You will just imagine what kind of reception was that. The mayor of the place didn't even come out. Hey, she's the famous man, Jesus Christ, they were talking about. Come, we'll come. No, the mayor did not come out. <laughs> no, the council people come out and greet Jesus. No. The only one that came out is a dirty, broken, devil-possessed naked man wow what kind of perception is that this would have been enough to stay in the boat <laughs> oh you know and this would have been enough for them to say oh let's go back why are we being met by a devil possessed man it is my personal opinion, brothers and sisters, that Jesus wanted the gospel preached in the country of the gatherings. Because at the end of the story, you will read that this demoniac of Gadara wanted to be with Jesus after he was healed. And Jesus said, no, no, you cannot go with me. Tell your family. Tell the town where you came from. Because the people are afraid and scared of him. Remember, you just broke the chains. <laughs> Might break my. <laughs> he broke the chains into, I don't know how many pieces. The fetters made of iron. It's forged, iron, steel. Yet, yet he break it in pieces. So the people are afraid and scared of him. Maybe just a sight of him, you know, people just run away. In the night, he howled like a dog. He just howled in the night in the tombs where the cemetery is. Woo! Man. <laughs> People ah, couldn't hear it. We didn't want to hear it. People are scared. But Jesus, when he cured and healed this man, he went back to his family and told them what Jesus had done in his life. Hallelujah. I could just imagine people will say, Wow, is this the man? Who is naked, who cut himself with stones, bleeding, and, and so strong, but now he's on the right man, mind, dressed properly, smells good. <laughs> and he came telling us about the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So that's why I said this is my personal opinion that the Lord Jesus Christ went particularly in this place so that he will save the town of Gadara. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. This demoniac was all he had to work with in that place. Man, he's working with the demoniac. And sometimes when we witness to other people, we want to witness to a, a, a president of the, of the uh, CEO or, or, or somewhere there that is so prominent. You know, we want to, to witness some kind of a, 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 a sane mind, a, a good-looking individual. Or, or Sometimes we think about that. What about a demoniac? About, what about a devil possessed? Can you go and witness to him? This is what Jesus did. He came all along the way, about 70 kilometers away, just to go from where he was 
Capernaum, crossing the, the Sea of Galilee, and then they walk again going to the place of Gadara, where they put walls in their homes and in their houses. So, you know, when he came there, he walked on this demoniac, it, this wasn't much of a choice. People put walls in their lives. They don't want to be disturbed. So the demoniac was there to meet him. Wow. When this, you know, if you read the story, this demoniac, when he heard, I don't know how he heard Jesus coming. But when he heard Jesus coming, he ran. And he kneeled and worshipped Jesus. Wow. So when God prepares away in a certain place some person for us to go and witness to him he does work well he will work for you and me don't be scared because there will come a time I don't know when but we will have these people coming in our church and you'll be scared <laughs> you'll be scared I've been exposed to that back in the Philippines and you know when we tried to to cast out the devil on that woman it's just a small Filipina woman but four of us we just flick asunder we're, we're no match for her but the Lord Jesus Christ that dwells in us is stronger so rebuke it in Jesus name we prayed for her she was delivered hallelujah she stays in the church was saved so you know I'm not telling that um, precisely that you know <laughs> but it's the possibility that the Lord Jesus Christ said in his words go to the highways and the byways in other words those, those people that are not likely to be saved they will come because the people that are decent and, and, and mature and, and, and good in, the, in, the, in their livelihood and, and all when God invited them come to the marriage supper or something like that in the, in the, in the parable that Jesus was, was saying one of them one by one each of them said excuses and they even killed uh, the, the, the prophets and the, um, the deliverer of the message and even the Lord Jesus Christ which is depicted as the one the son of the king they asked them to come to their party and they won't because they have their own agenda so when the son of God came they killed him so I mean we have the best of the best we have the Lord Jesus Christ in our midst when we worship him in our songs we could feel his presence how much more will you need the best food of your soul even the Lord Jesus Christ comes in satisfies the longing of your soul hallelujah so this was it this was it much of a choice for the Lord Jesus Christ this man was devil possessed this man was naked this man did not have a college education this man was not eloquent in his speech this man was not of high moral standing this man had a bad reputation that's what met the Lord Jesus Christ. This man lived among tombs. His home was, was the country of the graveyards where the dead people live. Oh, not living, but staying there. <laughs> a tombstone was his pillow at night. He was a terror to the countryside. People locked their doors at night for fear of him. He was often bound in chains by the city police and all the detectives there in the town. And he broke the chains and fetters asunder the city jail could not hold him the town council could not tame him they just leave him alone they were scared he was a man that could not be rehabilitated he was a threat to his society what a pity crying in the tombs cutting himself in stones foaming in the mouth and running naked whoo every night what a situation of this man seems like our society today there are a lot of problems and terrorists and drug addicts and not even you know, 
I mean, there are many who are possessed by devils and demons in our society. I mean, I mean, you could delete that in the record. <laughs> There are many who cannot be rehabilitated. There are many who are threat to our homes and our individual safety. There are many who cannot be tamed. Our jails and prisons are full of these outcasts. I've been working for more than a year in prison. I've seen it. Been there. And they go in and out of prison because they could not be rehabilitated back to society. No way. Our prisons are full of killers and murderers and extortioners and, and, and robbers and addicts. And full of them. The list goes on and on. Outcast of society. You know, when I was there, we were being trained for three months. You know, and when they say that we are correctional officers, we are not really um, prison guards. We are the ones who help prisons to be rehabilitated back to society. We are correctional officers. We correct their ways. Man, we could not, can't correct their attitudes and their, what they have. And their, they need the Lord Jesus Christ. Cannot bring them back to society because the parole board will say, You've been good, okay. Okay, you and they go back again. Building more jails and prisons is not the answer. As more will come, no man or society can tame this man. They cannot. She sin leaves its mark on the outcast of society. City Hall has no answers. What can they do? Rehabilitate? Can't. Our, our president in the Philippines says, I hate drugs. <laughs> and he put rehabilitation centers. He could not. I don't know. War on drugs is just, it's an ongoing problem. Police doesn't know what to do. Mayor has no answers in this case. The governor has no cure. Wild man, untamed men, men that live in darkness. But brothers and sisters, may I present to you the cure this morning. I will present to you the Lord Jesus Christ, whom you have worshipped and praised this morning. And I, I will also present to you the solution, because Jesus contained the untamed. Amen. Hallelujah. contain the untamable. Thank you, Lord, that when one of you or, or, or most of us has received the Spirit of God, He tamed us. I mean, I'm a wild man before. Not as wild as the demoniac of Gadara. <laughs> man, I, 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 uh, I attend parties every weekend when I was in high school and college. My mom was so angry at me. You want to continue your college? Or you just want to go partying? I said, I want to go continue my college. So! <laughs> Man, I was bad. Going with, the, with your friends in the world. So, the day they received the Holy Ghost, the Lord Jesus Christ tamed my life. He tamed even my tongue. I used to swear a lot. A lot of you swears a lot <laughs> before. <laughs> if I will just let you raise up your hand, maybe all of you will just, yes. 
we curse and swear as if it's just like, you know, words, easy. But now we can't. Because God, the Lord Jesus Christ, tamed your mouth. Hallelujah. He has tamed the untamable. This demoniac of Gadara met the master that day. He met the God of Israel. He met the living word of God. He met the deliverer of sin and suffering. He met the rehabilitator. He met the one that will tame the untamable. And you will notice that in the scriptures, he bound these 2,000 more devils that tries to tame this man out. How can that be? Legions of demons dwell in this man and he said, I'm out. Oh, where are we going to go? And the devil said, well, to the swines. <laughs> he was able to take these 2,000 more of, of devils living in this man and he tamed this man. In other words, what are the things that was taming us before in the world before we came to Christ? It's the devil. Hallelujah. Devils are tries to put things in our minds and in our lives. We need to be cleansed by baptizing in Jesus' name. We need to be filled with the Spirit of God so that we will tame. We will be tamed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. He was set free by the power of God. By the word of the Lord, he was set free. By the word of the Lord, he was a new man. Demons are no match for the Lord Jesus Christ. He is no match for the power of God. For greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ tamed the untamed man that day. The demoniac was healed. He was clothed properly and in his right mind. You could just imagine, you know, if you were there for years and years, this man was, was demon possessed and, and then he came out that day well dressed and clothed. Wow, I think all the scars in his hand and his body was healed by the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, he's got long hair because he was in the tomb. Nobody will cut his hair. I mean, I don't know what happened. But he was good. He was looking good. Hallelujah. So Jesus Christ tamed that attained man that day. So the society could not cope up with the things that are going around. Who can tame the leader of the North? <laughs> He's a madman. Even the whole council and the world said, don't do that. He still matched his <laughs> lighted his missiles and hmm, I don't care. Who can tame him? So, city hall could not contain him. <laughs> the mayor could not cope with the power of the demons. But I mean, they could not understand either the power of God. Do you think city hall could understand the power of God? Do you think the mayor of this place could understand the power? I've been, and, uh, they, they sent us again this, this, this invitation to go back to the city council and then we'll have some kind of, oh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want to go there anymore. Chief of police could not cope up with the power of God. The governor could not cope up with the power of God. They demanded Jesus to depart from the country. That's what they did because they saw the power of God and said, no, we don't want it. Because they don't understand it. They demanded Jesus to depart from their country. He was one who could heal the sick. He was the one who could cast out devils. He was the one who could heal the lepers. He was the one who could open the blind eyes. He was the one who could raise the dead. He was the one who could empty the jails and prisons. But yet they could not understand the power of God. He was the one who could join broken families together. Yes. But yet even families doesn't understand the power of God. 
but we understand the power of God. So that's why they said, depart from us, Jesus. We don't want your kind in our country. So what do, you, what do they do? When we start inviting people for Bible study, what do they do? Oh, I'm so busy. Oh, I, I, I can't, I can't, no, you know. A lot of alibis and, and reasons that they don't want to attend a Bible study. Why? Because they don't realize and understand the power of God. If they can only understand the power of God, and how will they understand? Except somebody will be sent to them and preach to them. How will they hear? Except somebody will go to them and preach to them the word. How will they have faith? Except the, the word of God is being preached to them. Because faith comes from hearing and hearing the word of God. Our society today does not want the power of God. Our society does not want the word of God. They don't want to be set free. They don't want even sinners to be converted or else the police would have no work anymore. Oh, hospitals will be empty. No more work for nurses. Sorry, nurses. <laughs> Because they don't understand. We still have work. Hallelujah. Let me stand on the word of God to you this morning and tell you that these people around us need the power of God. And who can go and tell them about the power of God? You and me. Us. I'm glad sometimes that, you know, when we talk to our doctor here, she always tells the people, I can give you medicine, but this power more than the medicine. Isn't it, Dr. Bell? <laughs> There's still power more than the medicine. There's still power more than the psychiatrist. There's still power more than rehabilitation. There's still power more than what society can offer them. And we have that power. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, Mayor. <laughs> let me tell me, you Governor, sir. Jesus is the answer. Amen. Let me tell you, Judge in the court, sir. Jesus is the answer. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, I mean, I mean, you know, you can build your jails, Mayor, Governor. You can build prisons, build more rehab centers, arrest your outcasts, burden your taxpayers. Only the power of God will change the untamed. <laughs> Only the power of God. Hallelujah. The demoniac of, the, of Gadara was changed fully. Whole being changed, thoughts changed, words changed, lifestyle changed. That's what God aims for you and me as well. Amen. When people outside see you changed, they will say, wow, I'd like that. Because look at him, he's changed. I mean, we have friends before that saw us, how we live a life before. You know? Somebody tells me that he, is, he, he, he was drinking for 30 days without sleeping. I don't want to mention names. <laughs> but look at that. People see you. But now you're in the church. The smell of alcohol. Oh, I don't want to drink. Yeah. Hallelujah. What a change. So when people see a change, they will follow you. Hallelujah. The demoniac of Gadara was changed. It worked with him. He wanted to follow Jesus and be his disciple. Do you, do you know what the healed demoniac did? He began to be an evangelist of the gospel throughout the regions of not only Gadara, but Decapolis. Wow! A bigger place than Gadara, Decapolis. Look at your Bible at the end. Of the, there's a map there. Decapolis is a bigger region than Gadara. Gadara is just a town. But he became an evangelist throughout the region of Decapolis. Because he has a testimony. If you have a testimony and experience with God, you can tell other people about the power of God. He's real. Besides your testimony, 
And then there's the word of God that says, repent and be baptized, every one of you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's the salvation in a, pack, in a package deal, deal. So you have your experience and the word of God. Whoa. Hallelujah. He began to tell people about the delivering power of the Lord Jesus Christ. What a testimony. What a witness for Christ. Here was a tamed who was untamed before. Here was the bound who was unbound before. Here was the naked who was clothed now. Here was a bruise who was healed now. Here was a screamer who has now become a preacher. Before he howls in the tomb in the night, but now he goes out in the day and says, Jesus is the answer. Amen. Hallelujah. A good Holy Ghost revival happened throughout that region because of the cleansed and tamed man that was cleansed and tamed. They have a Holy Ghost revival. <laughs> you could just imagine. People wanted to see the man that was untamed for years and years. He was he were scared of him and now he was an evangelist. People want to see him. Your testimony is a powerful thing. A good Holy Ghost revival will empty our jails. A Holy Ghost, a good Holy Ghost revival will empty our prisons. A good Holy Ghost revival will save our children. A good, Holy Ghost, a good Holy Ghost revival will civilize our society. A good Holy Ghost revival will do in one hour what our society has tried for many, many, many years. That's why we are aiming for revival. Because when you revive first in yourselves, it will contaminate your family it will contaminate not only your family your neighbors it will come contaminate not only your neighbors the, the whole society hallelujah our problem in our society today is we have put the Holy Ghost revival in our churches only oh well we have the ghost revival you go to your homes you didn't mention it Holy Ghost revival in our churches. We must let the untamed go free. We need to get the Holy Ghost revival out of our churches and turn it loose. That's why you, you will hear sometimes a preacher would say, Turn loose the Holy Spirit. Turn, turn God loose. You know, sometimes we hear, Turn God loose. <laughs> but that's how it is. We must, we must let loose of the power that is in us. Do not, you know, the Bible says, Jesus said, you, know, you cannot cover a candle, a light, under a bushel. You know, people will not see the light, but uncover it and let the people see the light. Because we are the light of this world. Amen. We are the salt of the earth. Amen. Hallelujah. So we need the Holy Ghost revival not only to our personal life, but in our churches and in our society. Hallelujah. That's why this untamed demoniac was tamed by Christ. And after he was tamed, he did the thing that God wanted him to do. He wanted to go with Christ, but Christ said, you have a lot of things to do. You have your family first. That's why when I was saved, you know, my first you know, uh, burden was my family. My father, my mother, my brothers, my sisters. And I could not sleep. I have to pray. I have to ask God, save them. Save them. I have to fast. I have to cry. I have, you know, save them. You know, almost 13 years I've been praying and asking God, me and my wife saved them. We were praying and fasting. Save them, Lord. We could not afford to see them. You know, if, you, if they are not saved, where will they go? So, first burden is your family. The demoniac of Gadara, Jesus said, 
tell your loved ones what the Lord God has done for you. So what did the Lord Jesus Christ has done in your life? Is your salvation just an ordinary thing that you won't tell your parents? You are scared of your parents? I'm talking to young people today. Are you scared of telling them, Oh, mom, dad, we went to church. No, I received the Holy Ghost. I spoke in other tongues. You will too. Because if you believe, you can receive. Yeah. Now, sometimes we have, we have to be radical in telling <laughs> the loved ones that we have. We cannot be softy, softy anymore. The Lord Jesus Christ is coming so soon. Amen. Hallelujah. And if you're still a scaredy cat, God is not pleased with you. You should just... Phew, you know? Only Jesus can tame the untamed. Only Jesus can satisfy the longing soul. Don't you think that you long for something in this world? I'm talking to you, the saints of God and the visitors as well. There is something that we long in this world. That we keep on longing and longing. We tried so many things to satisfy that longing in our soul. The only thing that would satisfy the longing in your soul is the Lord Jesus Christ. That's where the rest is. That's where the weary, the weary will rest. We will be weary of doing things our way. But when we did the Lord Jesus Christ have his own way in our lives, we have a rest. That's, that, that's what we call the Holy Ghost rest. That's what they call the seventh day rest. Hallelujah. So, let the river flow. Flow from us. To other parts of our homes and our society. Let it flow from the sinner's heart. Let it flow, sorry, from our hearts which are tamed to the sinner's heart. So that they will be tamed as well. Let's stand this morning. So let's come and let the Holy Spirit be loosed. In our hearts and in our soul. Because we are the ones that are tamed by the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's teach our family, our children, about the power of the Holy Ghost as the musicians will come.